In Rome, half a century ago, a radio station was born. Its name, Vatican Radio. Since 1931, this station has been airing a message of hope and peace throughout the world. Its first broadcast began with these words. Listen, all nations. Pay attention, all who live on Earth. This program recounts half a century of broadcasting by Vatican Radio. This is Vatican Radio. We invite you once again to be present for Pope John Paul II's Wednesday afternoon audience in St. Peter's Square. It's been a rather pleasant day, hasn't it? Not immoderately warm. And now shortly, the sun will begin to sink behind the cupola of St. Peter's. It's a sizable crowd, 50,000 at least. They've been gathering for the past two hours. A typical crowd, too, from all around the world. Speaking, no doubt, 50 or more languages and representing as many countries. Yes, and they're excited as usual, but not at all restless. In fact, they're rather patiently awaiting the Pope's appearance. Wait a minute. I think, yes, Pope John Paul is just now entering the piazza. Listen to that roar of approval. As usual, he's standing in the back of the papal vehicle, moving slowly down the cordoned off path. Even though this audience is a weekly affair, the pontiff never seems to take it for granted. That's right. He knows how much it means for the tens of thousands who gather in St. Peter's Square, and for the millions who are listening to this broadcast. It seems as though everyone wants to touch the pope. As he passes by, someone hands him a bouquet of flowers. They're stretching towards him over the barricade, with the hope of grasping his hand. He goes by quite quickly, really, but somehow he's able to communicate his concern for everyone in St. Peter's Square. The original studios of Vatican Radio were constructed by Guillermo Marconi, the inventor of the radio telephone system. At 4.30 in the afternoon of February 12, 1931, Pope Pius XI made the station's first radio broadcast. It was a simple message that was heard only a few miles away in Italian. Half a century later, the voice of Vatican Radio is aired on five continents in many different languages. Russian, Armenian, Latvian, Chiluba, Vietnamese. Fifty years later, it's transmitted around the world in 33 different languages. Each language has its own department. Each program has its own format. There's news, interview, stereo music. A number of language departments specialize in dramatizations, especially from the Bible. In my little Bible programs, I try to humanize the characters as much as possible. I make them speak in modern, almost hip language. And I make the situation, situations that the listeners can actually relate to. So, hey, you know, that happened in our house just the other day, except it actually happened to Abraham. One day, Jacob is in the kitchen with his mother, cooking up a long time speciality of his. A sort of meat and lentil stew. Esau hadn't been home for days. Suddenly, there were shouts outside, and a very dirty, very tired, absolutely starving Esau lurched in. What's that marvelous smell? I know what it is. It's that stew. <laughs> I tell you something. A bowl of that right now is worth more to me than gold. Never mind about gold. Is it worth your birthright? You can have as much stew as you can eat. If you give me what you don't want anyway. Your birthright. Your right to succeed, Dad. Listen, if I don't eat soon, I die, and a fat lot of good my birthright will be to me then. Do you swear? Yes, yes, I swear. And for goodness sake, they shot. Here, eat your food. But remember, to swear a promise is serious. And I was here and witnessed everything. Don't worry about saying anything to your father. I'll tell him. But she didn't tell Isaac, which was wrong. 
because it caused a great many problems. The program starts with an idea, an idea you get in the bus, having a bath, as you're getting into bed at night, an idea. Usually something, something you've seen, something that's happened to you. And you look at that, you realize it's probably been done before, because most things have been done before. But you try and get a new aspect on it, a new line on it. You take it back to the office, you sit down at your typewriter, you spend a couple of days mulling it over, throwing most of the papers into the waste paper basket. And you share your ideas with a few people, they feed you. You then go into the studio, put it all together with music, sound effects if necessary, come back, listen to it, cut half of it, throw it right away into the waste paper basket, and you're left with your product. Santa Maria di Galeria is the broadcast center for Vatican Radio. It's situated approximately 11 miles from St. Peter's Basilica. It was opened in 1957. The first program was aired on a 10 kilowatt shortwave Marconi transmitter. Today, this complex broadcasts with a 500 kilowatt transmitter and the largest rotating antenna in the world. The Italian language department produces a number of scripture programs. Each year, professional radio talent presents the Italian Easter dramatization. La tomba è aperta, la pietra è rovesciata, la tomba è vuota, il corpo è sparito. L'avranno portato via. Il sudor mi ripiegato in un angolo. Vi è uno seduto sulla tomba. Dice che è risorto. È apparso alla Maddalena. È apparso anche a Pietro. L'abbiamo visto. Abbiamo sentito la sua voce. L'abbiamo toccato. Ha mangiato con lui. I lenzuoli e le bende sono sul pavimento. È vivo. È vivo. risorto, è vivo, è il grido di gioia che esplose nel cenacolo la sera della prima Pasqua cristiana. Così ha inizio la biografia della nuova vita di Gesù, la storia del suo ritorno. È ancora tutta da narrare, è ancora in corso. The Chinese program in the Vatican Radio started in the 52 we broadcast to the Chinese in China, but we pay particular attention to the Chinese Christians. we have the song of our father in Chinese and we have two versions of it, our father in Chinese. One is classical one and the other is the modern one in vernacular Chinese. Communist regime. We have also 
a program in Mandarin for uh, mainland China. Generally, every day we use uh, 42, 43 languages. Signore e signori, buongiorno, qui Radio Vaticana, seconda edizione di Quattro Voci. Amici auditori, buongiorno, deuxième edizione del programma Quattro Voci di Radio Vatican. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our second broadcast of Four Voices today. Questa mattina Santo Padre ha erigito la diocesi di Hallam in Inghilterra con territorio separato della Four Voices is a news program that's broadcast twice every day. It's aired in four languages: Spanish, English, Italian, and French. In England, the Holy Father has erected the Diocese of Hallam with territory detached from the ecclesiastical circumscriptions of Leeds and Nottingham. The denominata ausiliare di Monsignor Johannes Joachim Degerart, arcivescovo di Paderborn in Germania. In Inghilterra, the le Saint Père has created the Diocese of Hallam with a territory detached from the circumscriptions ecclesiastical of Leeds and Nottingham and in the Rondon. Vatican Radio gets about four and a half thousand letters a month. And from these letters we feel, uh, we're assured, that people like to get the type of programs we, we give them. In other words, they want to hear about Pope John Paul, they want to hear his voice. The Pope is walking the last hundred yards to the platform. He pauses often to speak to people. In a few moments, he'll take his designated position and there'll be a series of introductions to him of different groups. Then he'll deliver his address, the complete talk in Italian, then condensed versions, in Polish of course, then also in French, in English, in German, in Spanish. There are various groups from the United States, including a pilgrim group from Washington, D.C., from St. Louis, and finally, there are men and women of the armed forces with members of their families. Dear brothers and sisters, a warm welcome to you all. Thank you for traveling here from so many countries to meet me. It is of the highest importance for consolidating the rights of men, of the family and of the nations, and for ensuring human dignity by a right relationship with truth and freedom. We want to, uh, first of all, give the possibility to the Pope to really uh, reach, especially those local churches which are in a very difficult situation as regards information, to strengthen their resistance in difficult situations and uh, also to promote uh, everything a pope has to promote. Unity of the church, defense of human rights all over the world. Christ's question to Peter, do you love me, is of key importance for the future of men and of the world. I hope that our response to the question will make us more aware of our dependence on Christ. Next week, the Sacred Heart Program will present the conclusion of this golden anniversary special on Vatican Radio. We hope you will be with us. <laughs>